What is up, YouTube, and welcome back to part three of the Bot to Better Warzone series. The series where I share with you guys how I went from a sub 1KD to about a two and a half or three weekly. Uh, in today's video, we're going to talk about the beginnings of advanced movement. We're going to talk about slide canceling, bunny hopping, drop shotting, snaking, uh, ringing around the rosy, as I like to call it, and peeker's advantage, which is going to be the basis of aggressive gameplay in general. So make sure you drop a like on the video, subscribe, click the bell, make sure you're alerted when I post a new video and we'll jump right into it. One of the most important parts of online multiplayer shooters is the concept of peeker's advantage. When you play an online game with other players on the same server or map, your information as well as the other player's information all must be transmitted up to the server that both players are playing on. There is latency in that transmission from me to the server and then the server back to me. The server back to me is telling me where other players are. So if I'm in an engagement and I'm challenging someone, if I peek them first aggressively, B hop out around the corner, you always hear people say, chal aggressively. If I B hop that corner, there's a good chance that because of the latency of my information, my location information to the server, and then back down to the other player, I'm going to see them first. And you can see that in this graph. Here is the peeker's advantage. And here is what the player being aggressively peaked sees. All of these mechanics that we're about to talk about, slide canceling, bunny hopping, drop shotting, not so much. Slide canceling and bunny hopping are used to, quote, break cameras or take advantage of peeker's advantage. The harder you send yourself around a corner, the more likely you are to appear on your screen further than where the server considers you to be and thus the other player considers you to be. And that can give you a huge advantage in a game like Warzone where the time to kill is so, so short. Mid-edit art is war here. Because we're recording this live on Twitch, Chat brought up a good point. I'm going to link a JGod video here for you all to check out that really goes into Peeker's advantage in great detail. So just to touch on what we touched on in part two, tax sprinting is when your gun is fully raised in the air and it is also the fastest way to move around the map. Now, regular sprint is, is when the gun is in your left hand, but not quite a walk. So here, this is regular sprint. Not ready to shoot, but not quite as fast as a tax sprint. This is where the slide cancel comes about, which we're not going to cover quite yet in this video. Just in a few minutes, we will. But slide canceling, one, is the fastest way to move. Two, it's very hard to hit your head because you're kind of popping up and down all the time on the map. And three, it resets the fastest way to move on the map, tack sprinting. So if you hit your tactical sprint, if you hit your slide cancel, excuse me, if you hit your slide cancel timing appropriately, you will always tack sprint. Some things you can do to help that is the blue perk double time extends the length of your tax sprint, which allows you to not have to slide cancel as often. I'm running double time right now. And, and if you struggle with slide cancel timing, which we'll teach you here in a moment, you could try double time because the blue perk in Warzone is pretty open right now as of making this video. So it is definitely helpful uh, with slide cancel timing. But if you hit your slide cancel timing appropriately, you will never run out of tax sprint. You can tax sprint forever. So jumping into the basics of the slide cancel, we'll go into the top down hand cam. I'm speaking to this as a mouse and keyboard player, but this is applicable to controller too. It's just going to be different buttons than what I'm pressing. The basics of a slide cancel are crouch, crouch, jump. And I'll show it to you very, very slowly on the keyboard. You can kind of see my screen in the background. So I'm sprinting, slide, slide, jump. Sprinting, slide, side, jump, sprint. Slide, side, jump, sprint. Now, here's what it looks like on screen. Slide, slide, jump. Really slow, but now I'm ready to sprint again. Slide, side, jump, sprint. Slide, side, jump, sprint. Slide, slide, jump, sprint. Slide, slide, jump, sprint. So slide, slide, and you're crouched, and then jump, and you're standing. Compacting that in terms of time, makes it look like this and you're up and ready to go and this is an important thing you can see i'm missing it a couple times here 
This is why a lot of sweaty players do it more often than you think. Because you need to do the slide cancel slightly before you run out of tactical sprint. And you'll get a feel for it. The gun will come down and you'll, then you'll have to slide cancel like two or three times to actually reset your tactical sprint. So there's something important to note about slide canceling and timing. There's a couple things that can change it. If you run double time in the blue slot, it extends your tactical sprint by about 30%, I think. And this can help you if you're struggling with your slide cancel timing. It extends the amount that you can tactical sprint without having to do a slide cancel and can lighten up on your fingers a little bit. I've been messing around with playing with it sometimes because the blue perk slot in Warzone is pretty open. Um, the other thing to note is when you start slide canceling, you're probably not going to do it as much as you think you should. If you're ending up every couple sprints running with the foregrip of your rifle or SMG in your hand, you're not slide canceling enough. If you are slide canceling enough, you should be able to tactical sprint all of the time. And once again, tactical sprint is sprint with your gun fully raised in the air without your left hand holding it. So I'll try to show you right now an example of good and bad slide cancel time. And keep in mind, right now in this warm up, I am running double time. So this is a set of good slide cancels here. Still able to tactical sprint, still able to tactical sprint, still able to tactical sprint. You can play cover with your slide cancels. Still able to tactical sprint. Still able to tactical sprint. Now, if you wait too long and you grab your gun, it's going to take a couple slide cancels to get your tack sprint back. So I've lost it again. Now, if I do it right, I won't ever lose it. Right there. That's like the bitter end of it right there. I did a little bit too late. But if you don't do it right, you won't get your tax sprint back. If you do it right, you should be able to tax sprint all the way across the map. The importance of the slide cancel in renewing your tax sprint all of the time is part of the basic foundations for some of the more aggressive movement mechanics like bunny hopping, for example, which we'll talk about next. A lot of good aggressive movement, you need momentum to do it. And the best way to maintain momentum in Warzone is to maintain tactical sprint. And to maintain tactical sprint means you must maintain slide canceling, which keeps your tactical sprint full all the time. Bunny hopping relies on two things. Tactical sprint, which you maintain from slide canceling, and knowing your 90 flicks and knowing your 180 flicks, which we talked about in part two. If you haven't seen it, that's linked down below. The reason we touched on the repeatable motion techniques in the previous video is because they are really foundational to some of the more advanced movement and aggressive movement techniques that you can use in this game. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys what a bunny hop looks like, and then I'll try to break it down in the top down camera to show you guys what I'm doing mechanically with my hands. So bunny hops are great to be used to chow off a corner aggressively. They need momentum of attack sprint to do appropriately, and it's a very timing dependent thing. So it's going to be hard for me to do it and describe it to you at the same time. So I'm going to try to do it, describe it to you first and then do it. So a bunny hop is when you come full tax sprint, flick 90 and bounce out of cover or behind cover. So it's not just jumping ADS, right? Anybody can ADS and jump, but it's about slinging out and having enough mo momentum to keep that jump going laterally. So tack sprint, flick, jump, ADS, all at the same time. And that should send you bouncing across the map. There it is. That was a good one. On mouse and key, it's hard because it, you're so used to always W keying and looking where you're going to run that if you hold W key when you do the B hop, you're not going to B hop sideways fully. And this is a unique mouse and key problem. You must be hop while only holding the strafe button. And then you'll be able to do a couple hops. If you hold W too much or flick the wrong direction while you do it, you're kind of just going to still. Now, the next movement piece we're going to talk about is actually not a movement piece at all, but a still stay still piece. Um, it is the drop shot. Now, the drop shot is pretty 50 50 a lot of the time in Warzone. it's really strong as a mouse and key player because you have a dedicated drop shot button where you should for me it's left control 
controller players are kind of beholden to having to hold the crouch button in order to prone and they're not immediately available to drop shot. It also can help break aim assist, but only sometimes. Places I would never use a drop shot at range. If you were more than 10 meters, 15 meters away from a user, drop shotting is very, very risky because all they have to do, if, if there's a person drop shotting over here, I just have to aim down the slightest bit to beam them. If I get up in this bot's face and I lay down, immediately, because I'm so close, I am out of that bot's field of view instantly. This is where the drop shot can be super, super effective. If you come up face to face with a player and boom, oh my gosh, you can just absolutely drop shot and laser them. So for me, that's kind of where the drop shot remains is I just ran up in somebody's face and it's my last ditch effort. I have no momentum. I can't jump out of the way. I can't slide cancel out of the way. I'm in the middle. I got to laser this person. See that range risky because all the person has to do is aim down a little bit. If you get up in their face and you have no momentum, the drop shot's probably your last chance. Other places that it can work is sometimes in the goo or if you lay prone in people's loot, uh, in stairwells, on Verdansk, it can be a great disguise. But again, the drop shot is rough until we start talking about the ring around the rosy aspect of using all of these movement techniques, which we'll touch on in the end of the video. The next concept we're going to talk about my little word for it. I'm sure people have called juking, juking in the past, but I call it ring around the rosy. And what it is, is starting to learn to use all of these movement techniques, your map knowledge and your game sense to start leading players you're in an engagement with through a path that you've defined, whether that's when you're reloading your weapon or replating, um, calling in a UAV. The more time you you spend doing multiple things in Warzone, the more successful you will be. So if you take shots and you need to plate, uh, doing so while moving is going to be much more beneficial for you than just hiding behind a container and plating and waiting for somebody to push you. If I'm in a fight here and I've spent some ammo and I need to get in a reload, I need to learn how to use my tax sprint, my slide cancels, my B hops, my drop shots, to lead this guy on a chase. I'm not expecting you guys to turn around and fry right off the rip, but instead of just locking up and hiding behind cover, when you're plating, when you're reloading, use your movement to get away from them and get, gather info with little peaks. Like that. So I always knew where this character or this player was. And while I didn't take shots, I was gathering information. I'm plating, I'm plating, 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 peeking, plating, pe pushing my right side, full slide cal cancel, boom. I don't know what I just said. What I mean to say is slide cancel chow. So I realize that this is a lot of information in one video, but what this is about is teaching you guys the basic fundamentals of what aggressive combat movement in Warzone is so that you can begin to start to chain them together and find what works for you. For example, I use slide cancels all the time behind cover in order to get peaks to juke and to, to keep people on their toes. Like this is the beginning of a ring around the rosy. Like this person hasn't, hasn't peaked me. Well, okay, now they've shot me. But the ability to play cover and get those 90 flicks, right? This is B hopping, 90 flicks or B hopping. Slide canceling cover like this and challenging this player are just reps. Because I have so many reps on the input device, I know what my 90 is, what my 180 is on the mouse, and I'm able to string together these things. And the more and more I string together, the better and better I get at the game. Now I can, I can sometimes 1v3, 1v4. And that's a very, very cool place to be having started at a sub 1KD. Um, but it's just about learning the basics and making sure you're doing them right. Once you have the fundamentals on lock, you'll be able to expand and expand and expand and take on more challenging situations. So what I would say is load up in the warm up that I mentioned in part one of the video, which will be linked below. Start with two or three bots and try to practice movement on them 
and not necessarily shots and then start incorporating shots in there maybe increase the health so you have a longer amount of time to react to getting shot but if you can get to a place where you can play cover and move away from people in meaningful ways a big part of playing warzone or any br is just having a purpose so if i get information i'm peeking for information i got information that they're right there so i'm going to push right and i'm going to play this box and i'm going to peek the sides of this box using tactical sprint and i'm going to slide cancel to refresh it now i know that they've moved right they're behind that wall i'm going to swing out and 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 shoot them based upon the information that i've gathered with my aggressive movement if you have any questions drop them in the comments below um we're recording this live right now twitch.tv slash art underscore is underscore war come into the chat ask me all the questions that you have we're going to keep making these videos as we come up with ideas for them and i'm going to share with you guys how i went from bot to better thank you guys so much for hanging out today make sure you like the video subscribe click the bell and we'll see you soon peace